Uh, Senator Singh. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I speak on this urgency motion in the hope that this whole sad and sorry saga of politicising race relations in Australia has come to an end. Earlier this month, the Abbott government faced up to the reality of its own political incompetence when the Prime Minister, overruling his Attorney General on the latter's signature policy, and one which Senator Brandis had promised to his backers in the Institute of Public Affairs that he would bring through if elected, backed away from introducing changes to the Racial Discrimination Act. This was an abandon abandonment of a reckless and ill-conceived election promise to gut federal protections against racist hate speech contained in Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. These protections that have supported and underpinned Australia's multicultural policy society for more than two decades. The defence of these important protections and the government backflip on their proposal was a major, major victory for people power, for the communities that had organised and spoke up against this assault on the harmony of the nation's diverse cultures. And those community organisations were many and varied, many and varied. Groups such as the National Congress of Australia's First Peoples, groups such as the Arab Council of Australia, the Executive Council of Australian Jewry, the Chinese Australia Forum, the Australian Hellenic Council, the Korean Society of Sydney, the Armenian National Committee of Australia, the Law Council, the Human Rights Commission. It goes on and on and on. But in announcing that uh, policy backflip and overruling the blundering Attorney General Senator Brandis, the Prime Minister indicated that his government was reversing course because its proposed green light to bigotry was a needless complication in the government's relationship with the Australian Muslim community. So the question remains, Mr Deputy uh, President, Acting Deputy President, has this arrogant government abandoned its promise to give that green light to racist hate speech in Australia because it has listened to the vast majority of Australians and now realises that, it, that, it has, that their policy was very much recklessly irresponsible and a destructive one? Is it because of that, or has the government only reluctantly retreated from its ideologically blinkered promise for the time being because it realised its charter for bigots was exacting too high a political price on a government that is already the most unpopular in living memory? So let's just take a moment to reflect. On the 24th of March this year, the Attorney General, Senator George Brandis, shocked the Australian public by stepping in to defend the rights of bigots and backing this with major changes to our laws against racial hate speech. People do have the right to be bigots, you know, he told the Senate. The opposition to such a radical tear in Australia's multicultural fabric came from all over Australia, but included rumblings from, of course, within his own side, from his own backbenchers, the member for Hasluck, the member for Reid, and even Senator Seselja, as well as from Liberal leaders such as the then Liberal Premier Barry O'Farrell and his successor, uh, Premier Mike Baird. To declare that the rights of bigots the rights of bigots are more important than the rights of minorities, minorities who suffer race-hate speech on a daily basis in this country, is simply wrong. And while more than 150 community groups came out against the legislation, not one, not one pledged their support uh, for it. Instead, Senator Brandis had to look elsewhere to find support, looking to fringe groups like the Institute of Public Affairs 
and to the man who he owed the greatest debt and to whom he, paid, he, he had promised a legislative change. In the first place, the well-known right-wing commentator Andrew Bolt. Even further out, of course, was the support he received from the notorious Holocaust denier Frederick Tobin and the Adelaide Institute. Brandis, Senator Brandis had gone so far to the right that even the Prime Minister had to intervene. And what did Senator Brandis say at that moment of backflip when the Prime Minister made a leadership call? He said, well, you know what, what this business is like. You win a few, you lose a few. Well, what has Senator Brandis won? What has he won? He has won nothing in his entire time as Attorney General. He has won nothing and lost a lot. He has lost a lot of respect. He has lost a lot of credibility. So much so that the Prime Minister himself had to rein him in. Now let's not forget, let's not forget the attempts that Senator Brandis made when he was trying to repeal Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. He made an attack on a very highly credible, highly regarded senior counsel in Arthur Moses when Arthur Moses provided advice to Senator Barry O'Farrell on these proposed changes, advising that they were certainly not something that, 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 that the Premier should support. Then there was Senator Brandis's phone call appointment of the new Freedom Commissioner, Tim Wilson, appointed to help him that, uh, uh, with his cause to uh, repeal Section 18C. And then, of course, there was Senator Brandis's attempt during Senate estimates to silence the Race Discrimination Commissioner, Tim Salpomasane, entirely from being able to speak on this issue. Well, now what we have seen is Prime Minister Abbott outlining that I don't want to do anything that puts our national unity at risk at this time, and so those proposals are now off the table. That was his remarks because of his new counter-terrorism proposals that he wanted support for from the Muslim community. So it was okay for the Prime Minister to put our national unity at risk before. It was okay to divide Australians, to give freedom to bigots and to take away the rights of vic victims of racial abuse. But now that he wants to get his counter-terrorism proposals through, now he wants national unity. Now national unity all of a sudden is important to him. So when all of a sudden the Prime Minister wants the Muslim community on side, they backflip on these draconian racial discrimination laws. But what does this mean then for the future? Because the question still remains, the question still remains, and I put it to Senator Brandis, what is it that you want to say uh, to people that is not in the current legislation that you cannot say now. That is really the fundamental question here when it comes to the attempts by this government to make these changes. What is it that you want to say to Aboriginal people in this country that you cannot say under the freedom provisions currently in Section 18D of the Racial Discrimination Act? What is it that you want to say to me that you cannot say now under our current racial discrimination laws and the freedom provisions provided within it. And why have you seen it so necessary to politicise race relations in this country? There has been a flawed consultation process in them trying to make these changes and bring them forward. Nevertheless, that didn't stop the community from putting in 5,000 submissions or more, the majority of which were against the changes. People have won out here 
with this backflip, people have won out and our laws remain, which Thank is a you, good thing Senator for Australia. Singh, the time for the debate is now expired.